The last time I rode a Thruxton was back in 2016 when the R model was launched, so I thought it's about time I swung my leg over one of those again to see if I still enjoyed riding it as much as I did the first time. This time though, Triumph had very kindly lent me the RS version. So what's different about this particular bike? Well, Triumph have made a lot of changes to this bike over the R version. It has got a dedicated chassis, but the real changes have come from the parts that have bolted onto it and the changes they've made to the engine. It's got a lighter weight crank, They've used the magnesium cam cover, the balancer shafts and the clutch are lighter. Uh, it's got a thinner engine wall and overall they've shaved six kilograms off of the weight. Uh, but more importantly, they've knocked 20% off of the inertia. So it should lead to the bike being more responsive. And uh, it certainly does feel that. It's been a while, obviously, since I rode the last one. There's an extra 8 PS. Um, so it peaks at 105 PS, I think, at 7,500 revs. And there's a very healthy 112 Newton meters of torque. And I think you can certainly feel the changes that they've made all around on this bike. But the changes don't just stop with the engine. There's a lot of new componentry on here. We've got shower, big piston, upside down forks on the front, fully adjustable obviously. Olin's fully adjustable shocks on the rear. Uh, it's fitted with Metzler Racetech RR tyres, which are as near as damn it slicks. You've also got Brembo M50 brakes on here, and more on those later. There's also a new set of aluminium rims which has helped to bring the weight down. They're not tubeless, so you still have inner tubes in the tyres, but uh, the aluminium rims do help to save weight, and the black ones that they've got on this jet black bike do look very nice indeed. Everywhere else it's traditional Thruxton, uh, the clocks, and everything on the bars is all remains the same. You've got some difference in the electronics in terms of the riding modes, they've changed slightly. So the Sport one has been tweaked to, to suit the changes that they've made to the engine. But it's still that traditional Thruxton look and feel. When it comes to modern retro bikes, the, the term calf racer or cafe racer gets banded there about quite a lot and uh, not always correctly. And the Thruxton is still the closest, really, you're going to get to a 60s cafe racer. And I guess you could argue that the guys back in the 60s that were modifying their bikes to race from cafe to cafe, uh, this is kind of in that spirit. Those guys would have taken as much weight of the bike off as they could and put any performance enhancing parts on it that they could find or afford. Obviously, there wasn't a lot of those around in those days. Now you could argue, I suppose, that those guys nowadays would be riding sports bikes. When you look at the, the heritage of these bikes and, and where they've come from, I still think that the standard Thruxton is the, is the better option. For me, just the, the, the addition of the, the, the gold forks and, and shocks at the back are just, uh, you know, just a little bit jazzy. Maybe I just don't get the point of this bike from that point of view, but um, in terms of being authentic, I don't know. But this is certainly a much more track focused kind of sporty ride. And that's part of the reason I've come to some of these roads to ride is because of the new suspension setup. Now on marble like roads or maybe on nice flat tracks, it's phenomenal. It is a, it's very predictable. Uh, you point the bike and it goes where you want it to go. It's nice and taut. For me, it's a little bit too firm. Um, but as soon as you get out onto normal roads like this way, you might want to go out for a ride, that harshness becomes apparent. Uh, and actually for me it gets in the way of enjoying riding the bike because uh, it just kicks off of every kind of lump and bump on the road. It's a thrilling ride, but it's thrilling probably more because it feels like you're going to crash 
than the actual sort of the ride. Now I might be going a bit over the top of that, but it's definitely for me too firm for British roads. Um, I've been playing around, I've been backing the compression off to see if I can uh, soften it up a little bit. And again, that's personal preferences for me. I prefer a little bit of a softer, more comfortable ride and I'll forgive some of that uh, sportiness. But it's just the mere fact that it, it bucks around quite a bit on rough surfaces and when it's doing that in the middle of a bend, it's a little bit disconcerting. So I think having it a little bit more compliant would help. But just for these kind of roads, you, you probably can't sense it so much. You might be, I've got my 360 camera on the front to do some filming later on and you can see how much that is bouncing around. However, looking away from the ride quality on the road, the rest of the bike is pretty phenomenal. You do notice, as I say, the difference in that uh, tune and the extra power that the, the, the engine puts out. It's still only 105 PS, so it's not hugely powerful. Um, the bike weighs 197 kilos dry, so it's not really a lightweight either. Um, but that gobful of torque that you've got that comes in 700 revs lower down the range than the previous model um, it's just there, instant power when you need it. So it does make the bike feel, you know, possibly like it's got more power than the uh, than the spec sheet would suggest. And that's one thing I always think of when you get people having arguments over the spec sheets on a bike. Quite often the riding experience is very different to what it says on paper. And uh, this is a lot of fun to ride. And the brakes, I haven't talked about the brakes yet, but these M50 calipers on the twin rotors at the front are absolutely phenomenal. It's one of the most uh, noticeable things about this bike. So it just picks up beautifully. You do get that feeling that you are riding a classic old bike, this elongated tank that you kind of hunch over. The flat two gauges that sit out in front of you and stick right out. It's um, very evocative of that era. It makes a beautiful sound as well. Bear in mind this is obviously a completely stock exhaust with a big catalytic converter in it but it's got that really nice parallel twin burble. Other than the sort of less than compliant ride that I've talked about actually the riding position is pretty comfortable. The seat is good, it's fairly broad. Now although it looks like these are clip-ons they're not actually particularly low so even uh, an overweight middle-aged man like me can ride on this for a long time and not feel uncomfortable. The gearbox is nice and slick. I'm surprised it hasn't got a quick shifter on it as standard given that this is a RS, it's a much more race or track focused bike. I would have thought that it would have come with a quick shifter, particularly at 13 grand. Um, but I think it's there as an optional extra. And the other thing to think about whilst I'm back on the bumpy roads are the Metzler Racetech RR tyres. Um, in conditions like this when it's warm and dry, it's about 15, 16 degrees today, um, they are stickier than the contents of a baby's nappy. I'm not sure I'd want to be uh, pushing the bike in the wet. Actually, I'm not entirely sure I'd be overly happy at all in the wet with the tyres when you look at how much your tread is on them but I could be wrong but thankfully uh, it hasn't rained since I've had the bike to, to be able to try that out um, if I get a chance I'll give it a go um, and as I think one the 17 inch wheels all round I think 120 section tyre on the front and a 160 or 170 on the rear I'll double check. Oh, no, there you go. I can get them wet now. 
and there's something about the profile of the bike as well which it doesn't quite work and I think it's just particular to this bike obviously this has still got the standard huge mudguard on the rear with the massive tail light and the massive indicators um, but there's a, a there's a big gap between the tire and the wheel arch now I don't know if the back has been raised because of the new suspension or the the, the tires are a, a slimmer profile um, the seat height is, I think is 810 millimeters so I don't think that's any different to what we've seen before sure, but when you look at it from the side it's just it looks like the back wheels not big enough now obviously if it was my bike that rear mudguard would come straight off and I'd have a nice little tail tidy small LED light and uh, LED indicators uh, and that would really make it look better and it may just be that it's that mudguard with that tyre on this tail end just it just doesn't work that well but as I say if you're looking for a really authentic modern retro to live your calf racer dreams then the Thruxton is, is really the the king of the beasts out there but for me somehow unusually for Triumph the whole is less than the sum of the parts I think they've just made it just a little bit too sporty although having said that as you can see it's quite happy around town the throttle's not snatchy uh, the fueling is good uh, you've got good vision the mirrors work well these bar and mirrors work particularly well it's pretty maneuverable so actually if you want uh, an everyday bike that you can go out and pretend to be a 60s calf racer at the weekend or indeed if you want something that looks really special to ride around in you love this style but you want to do the occasional track day um, then uh, I, I think this is going to be perfect I think this could uh, I think if you're a good rider you could really embarrass some sports bike guys out around the track on it even if even though it is only just you know over 100 horsepower but it flows very well through corners and uh, as I say on a nice smooth flat track it's going to hold a line really well and I think you can have a whale of a time so really at the outset from this video I wanted to find out if I enjoyed riding this bike as much as I did the R back in 2016 and the answer is yes I did but for me this is just a little bit too aggressive in terms of the ride quality but it is a very nice bike and it's still I think a very relevant bike in the range now if I was to go back to a modern retro you know I sold my street twin a couple of years ago uh, sadly when I lost my job I couldn't keep two bikes and it was the least practical of the, the two that I had uh, if I was to go back to a modern retro um, I'd often thought that I would buy a, a speed twin but having said that the fact that I have an adventure bike which is my practical kind of everyday put some luggage on it go and run some errands on it or go scratching around the lanes or do some dirt riding I think my second bike I would want to be somewhat different and I think this is where this bike stands out I can quite easily see this sat in the gap well not this particularly but a Thruxton sat in the garage next to my 790 Adventure and uh, I think I'd quite enjoy having a uh, a standard Thruxton and going to town on it with a few accessories and and doing a little build series interesting so I'm not going to waffle on anymore as I say for me this was just a case of revisiting this bike and uh, and seeing uh, how it fared after what, five years or so since I reviewed the last one and uh, it holds up well a few niggles but generally still I believe that the best modern version of what we would be calling a calf racer Triumph have got it right with this formula so I hope this has been useful I hope you've enjoyed the video I um, apologize if I've offended any Thrux and RS owners but 
these views are always subjective, they're always one man's opinion. Fine, maybe I'm softening to this bike now, I've been riding it a bit more, my first impressions were not great. But perhaps now they'll be improving. Anyway, I'm going off at another tangent completely. So I'll say if you've, if you enjoyed the video, hit hit me a like. That would be much appreciated. Thank you for moving over Fiesta. But I can't see you're in that corner far enough. But I can now. So as I say, if you've enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, maybe you'd consider hitting the subscribe and the notification bell. If you're not new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, then why not? Please do so. And all that leaves me to say is, until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon.